Welcome to Health Club with Julia. I'm your host, health coach, and registered dietitian, Julia Campagna. I'm on a mission to bridge the gap between looking your best and living your life to the fullest. After years of over-dieting, struggling with disordered eating, and destroying my social life, I finally found how to reach my dream physique without sacrificing the things I love. Now I'm sharing all my strategies and education with you. We'll be talking all things health, including hormones, metabolism, and lifestyle to help you cut out the confusion and start living. So get cozy and join the club. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Health Club with Julia podcast. As always, I am so happy you are here. Today's episode is going to be just kind of like a quick chatty episode. And there's no like real prompt for this or anything. It's just, it's just a chat. And it's not going to be super informative or educational. It's like I said, it's seriously just going to be like sit down, chat, what's going on with my life. Um, So... I want to talk about the fact that I have rebranded. So if you have been following me on Instagram, you have probably seen this already. I have already mentioned it and announced that on Instagram that I have rebranded. If you are new here, you can go check that out for more, but I'm going to kind of give like just a little background on why I've rebranded, my thought process with this whole rebrand idea and coming up with the logo, like all the details on how I rebranded, why I rebranded, all the things. So sit down, get comfy, get cozy. We are just, we are just talking today, you and I. We are just one-on-one here. So I'll give my kind of like story and background from beginning to now and what has brought me up to this point so you guys kind of understand the process that I've gone through. It'll help you understand a little bit more on the why I rebranded as I go through it. But starting from the very beginning, when I started my business. So I started my business back in 2020. At the time, I had just stopped my prerequisite courses I needed to become a registered dietitian, and I was starting grad school in fall of 2020 for my dietetics degree. And I graduated undergrad in 2018, spring of 2018. So I had from fall of 2018 to fall of, well, I didn't go to school. Oh, did I go to school in? See, I can't even remember. It's been so long. Um, No, I went for my prerequisites from fall of 2018 through to fall of... 20, no, yeah, 2019. I did not have anything going on, I don't believe, in spring of 2020. I can hardly even remember, but I don't think I did. I think that was my, I like just ended in December of 2019, and then I had spring off, and then I was going to be starting up again fall of 2020. So that's where it was taking me to. So I, during that time, from undergrad to then going into grad school, I knew I couldn't get like the job that I desired until I finished grad school, which would have then been in 2022. And so I had this gap from 2018 to 2022 where I knew like, hey, I don't have my dietetics degree yet, so I can't go and like get a big girl job in that field until I'm licensed, until I go through my exam. So what am I going to do? And so at the time, When I was finishing undergrad, I then decided to become a personal trainer. This was because I love sports. I love health and fitness. I love nutrition. Obviously, I was going to get my dietetics degree, so I love nutrition. I love sports. I played sports my entire life from kinder kickers all the way through college. I did go to a Division I school to play soccer, so I had played sports literally like my whole life and I didn't really want to give that up that was like my one passion at the time besides nutrition and again I was going to school for nutrition so I couldn't really do anything nutrition focused even though that was my passion my second passion was health fitness working out and so I was like okay might as well become a personal trainer and do that route I just needed a way to kind of make some money help myself out and save up for my future, like future moving out after grad school and like all that. I I wanted to start doing that when I was done with undergrad. And so I was like, all right, what what do I do here? 
And I had a, a few jobs, you know, I did waitressing, I worked at a golf course, I did all the things and then I was like, I'm going to become a personal trainer. So then I studied, I became a personal trainer and I was working in a gym as a personal trainer in a private gym. And I was doing that for a while, making, you know, a decent amount, I was able to save up some money, it was going great all until COVID hit. And so COVID happened obviously starting in 2020 and obviously it's not the best time to be a personal trainer because absolutely no gyms were open so it's not even like my gym closed and I could go to another gym and get a new a different job every gym was closed and honestly everything was closed besides like grocery stores but everything was closed down so you couldn't even go and get a different job as a waitress or something else I mean obviously we all went through that so we all know and experienced what that was like but yeah, everything closed down, so I was like, okay, well, crap, I am now out of a job. I now can't continue to save up money while I am, you know, trying to go to school still. So, so now what? I was kind of at a loss where I was like, okay, my options are very limited. I, I don't know what route to take. I don't know if I should just take some time off of work and, you know, focus on still going to school because I was still starting school fall of 2020. And... So I was like, okay, what do I, what do I want? Think longer term, think bigger picture. What do I want? And so I started thinking about what I wanted with my dietetics degree. What was the outcome going to be with that? And I knew from the very beginning, before I even started my dietetics degree courses in grad school, I knew I wanted to go private practice route. I love being one-on-one -on -one with clients. I love that atmosphere. I was a personal trainer, so we always had one-on-one -on -one time and I just loved that aspect of it. Uh, not to mention, like, in world of dietetics, that is way different than, you know, working in a hospital or working in a rehab center, and I didn't really see myself working in a hospital. I didn't really want that for myself. So I always knew private practice was going to be the route that I wanted to go. And so I also knew in my head, you know, I knew after grad school, I was going to need to work for someone in private practice before I could start my own. But the end end goal for my degree was to have my own private practice. That was always the goal of my dietetics degree. But I, I also knew like that might not be realistic to go right out of school to start my own private practice. So I probably have to work under someone for some time. And so I was like, all right, well, why don't I just kind of start my own thing now? And it won't be dietetics. It'll just be more of like, you know, what I do with personal training, you know, train, give workout programs, and then do some nutritional guidance. So not necessarily nutrition support um, for more in-depth clients, but just give nutrition recommendations and suggestions for people. So I was like, all right, might as well start doing this now since I know that that's kind of what I want to do. So in March of 2020 is when I decided to start my business. So I went through the whole legality of it, got, you know, my whole taxes, everything done for it, legal name, all of that set and done. And I did hire a business coach at this time to help me with the back end stuff. I did not go to school for business. I had no clue. I think I took like one business class in college and I had one economic class in high school. So that was the only like business information that I had ever gotten, which side note, even if you don't have a business degree, like even if you're not going to college for business, I always think that colleges should make business be mandatory for students to take. I had mandatory classes, like obviously you have English is mandatory, you have some sciences that are mandatory. My school <clears throat> was a Catholic school that I went to for college, and so I had religion as one of my mandatory classes which like I'm not a religious person um so that was you know whatever um but they don't make business courses mandatory and I'm like why why not because those are the things that you will use most most people I mean I use some science because that's involved with nutrition but like most people ain't doing anything with science I don't need to know all that stuff we have already taken so many years of English because so like you know maybe that Maybe that should be mandatory too, but besides the point, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but business courses should be absolutely mandatory for college students to take. It's unfortunate that it's not, but basically back to my story, I really didn't take many business courses at all. I had no idea 
even what business terms meant. Like, the basic business terms that anybody listening to this probably would be like, are you serious and look at me weird? Yeah, I don't, I didn't know, like, any legal terms, like, business stuff, none of it. Zero. I had zero clue. So I was like, okay, well, I'm starting my own business, but I don't even know how to do that. I don't know what to do. I don't know what even things mean. I need some help. So I did hire a business coach at that point just to kind of work on back-end stuff and get the business actually up and running. So I went through her courses, um, got her help, built out the back end of my business, and I think it wasn't until later on in the year I can't even remember the month that I actually had it up and running. I want to say it was summertime, like maybe July I had it up and running. Um, so roughly around July of 2020 is when I was like good to go, ready to take on a few clients. I started off very small. I only took on like a handful of clients just to like test the water, see how everything was, not overload myself until I got more comfortable doing it. But summer of 2020 is when I like launched it all and set out on this journey. At the time, it was called JFA Fitness. That is my first middle name and obviously fitness. Um, and so that was the start of my business. And again, it really was focused mostly on the training aspect of it and macros because as a personal trainer, you learn about macros, you can supply someone with macros, um, you can give nutrition advice, um, you can't really make recommendations or like, you know, do all the things that I can do now. You can, I guess you can make recommendations, but you can't do as much as I can do now. So at the time it was really just training focused with some macro support and nutritional guidance. Um, and that was the basis of my programming. So very basic, pretty typical standard one-on-one -on -one training, coaching, fitness coaching. And that was great. I had done that for a while. Um, I would say probably a year and a half I was doing just kind of that. I was taking on a lot of clients. I was getting clients great results. Like it was going really well. I was able to still save up some money that I wanted and it was going great. I even had some employees at the time, like I did hire people on. Um, it was really going so well. And then a year and a half in, I was already thinking like, all right, I got to pivot a little bit. I, I need something new. This seems too basic. I need more to my business. I need more to enhance the outcomes for clients and the experience for clients. And I just wanted more. So I again hired a business coach, the same business coach actually that I first hired um, for like round two of her business courses. Um, so I did that, learned a little bit more, got a little bit more crafty with my business, still called JFA Fitness, still kind of the same focuses, just added a little bit more to it. Tweaked it a little bit, made it a little bit more like, I guess, professional and just added more to it, gave more value to my coaching. And so again, you know, tweaked some things, um, still had the same name, still was working on some things, just tweaked a little bit and made it a little bit better. And so that you know, was again going pretty well for a while, um, got some more clients, you know, the whole whole ordeal. So I was going through that for quite a while. It's now 2024. And so bring me now to, I would say, Jan January. I don't know if it was exactly January, but early 2023. So right, so I had my business 2020. I went through the whole like first year and a half. So I would say roughly around end of 2021, early 2022 is when I again hired that business coach, went through the whole like pivoting, building some more things out, enhancing it a little bit more. And then, so that then took me from about 2022 to now early 2023. 2023 is when I, I was done with grad school at this point. I graduated August of 2022. I became a registered dietitian in November, took my exam, passed, um, and became an official registered dietitian in November. And so now, early 2023, I was done with school. I got my degree, I was a registered dietitian, and I learned so much during those two years of my program. I also found different passions. So my last semester of grad school. It's obviously the hardest. That's when you have like a capstone project, a thesis, 
So these really, really big projects that are due, that take a lot of time, they are, they are crazy. Anybody who's in grad school going through all this, you know. Um, but they're really big projects. And my focus on my capstone project was, or my thesis, was female hormone health. And like hormonal birth control talk, um, different different things that have to do with menstrual cycle and overall cycle health for females and overall hormone health for females. That was what my thesis kind of covered without getting too far into it. And so when I was doing all the research and I was, you know, going through all of the steps for my thesis, I fell in love with female hormone health. My previous passion was eating disorders. Obviously, if you followed me, you know that I've had my past experience with that. And so when I, you know, in 2022-ish, when I started enhancing things, that's what I was kind of focusing on more. Like, okay, I I want to take on, you know, these these roles, again, within my scope of practice. Um, but I, I wanted to dive a little bit more into mindset and nutrition stuff and not just training. And then come, you know, when I was ending grad school and I was doing my thesis, I just, I don't know what it was, but I was doing all the stuff for my thesis and I was like, yep, this is it. This is what I'm passionate about. I love this topic. I love female health. I love talking about menstrual cycles. I love talking about fertility. Like I loved everything about it. And so early 2023 is when I was like, all right, you know, starting to think about it more. I still was thinking about it even after I graduated. I was like, I love these topics. Like how can I incorporate this into my business? What am I going to do? And so I started to pivot early 2023. Um, if you stalk my Instagram page and go way back, you will probably see the differences. So when I was first starting my business 2020 to like 2022, I was in my influencer era. I was really just kind of posting pictures of my body. I was posting my workouts and I was like, hey, I'm a fitness guru. That's what I was kind of promoting. And then come late 2022, early 2023, when I started thinking about, okay, how can I incorporate more of my passion into my business? That's when I started to pivot. So I started making more, you know, swipe posts with educational topics. I started talking about hormone health a bit more. I started just having that be more of my focus. And so I stopped posting like my body really. I stopped posting workouts altogether. Like I haven't posted a workout video on my page in years at this point. And I just kind of shifted to I want to be more professional in my business and I want it to be more in depth with more complex cases than just, Hey, give me a workout. And so I pivoted my marketing. I pivoted my Instagram and I really just started like talking to the camera more, giving more tips and tricks and educational things, people that, or things that people can actually use to benefit like their health. So I started to pivot marketing wise, that was the first step in like, all right, I gotta, I gotta change some things up. I'm no longer super passionate about like the training side of it. I'm really passionate about nutrition aspects and female health. And so that was beginning of 2023 when I started to kind of pivot. I did my first hormone masterclass in 2023. And so I was like, all right, this is, this feels a lot better. This feels more me. This feels what I, you know, am more passionate about. So this is good. This is great. So we started doing that 2023 and then even more so started pivoting more in 2024. Again, with my marketing, my free resources, um, I did another hormone workshop in 2024 earlier this year and I just kind of kept emphasizing the fact that I am a metabolic hormone health coach that's what I want to be known for and pulled away from just like the fitness training aspect of it. And so I was having these thoughts about kind of a rebrand at the time back in early 2023. I didn't know it was going to end up as a full, full blown rebrand, but I had already started feeling these feelings early 2023. And so early this year, 2024, someone was like, all right, I, I have been pivoting. My marketing is, a little bit more geared towards specific people and specific needs. And so I just, I don't know about my brand. And that's when I was, you know, kind of thinking, what should I change? Like, what can I do? So early this year, I again enhanced my coaching. I added all new elements to my coaching. 
I really increased the client focus, client experience in the last, again, this might have actually been late 2023. I don't even remember when I made all these changes, but late 2023, early 2024, I really started to enhance my coaching program even more so than I did in 2022. And I, like I said, added all new elements to it, really kind of tried to make it top notch, like really bring extra value, really bring extra resources, make this something that someone could come in here and change their whole freaking life. Like that's what I wanted for my clients. I wanted the client experience to be so good that people just wanted to be a part of this, not only for themselves, but just the community aspect of it and having a group of women that they can go to for support and just like I wanted the experience to be top notch for them. The experience and the outcome to be top notch for them. And so I really kind of switched things around and really enhanced my coaching program in again late 2023, early 2024. So bring us now to present day. I have been thinking about these things in an actual rebrand now until since like early this year. And I just really didn't make changes until now because I wasn't set on what I wanted to change specifically and what I wanted to change it to. But earlier this year, I kind of revisited my vision. What did I want for my business longer term? And I thought a lot about this and I kind of planned out my longer term vision, my five, 10 year plan for this business and what I wanted it to look like. And once I did that, everything kind of started to click. And I was like, all right, this, this makes sense. I kind of know what I want to do now. And so I revisited, you know, my brand's mission and vision and that really helped me understand what I needed to do for this rebrand. And so now present day, I've been working on this rebound for probably two months of like actual, like creating the logo, switching up different things in my business again, and like all the little things like that. It's probably been two months of me doing like the creative side of it. And so bringing us now to Emerge, Emerge Coaching Collective. That is now what the like coaching name is. Instead of JFA Fitness, it's now Emerge Coaching Collective. And I made it a coaching collective because I wanted to add more than just private coaching to, to this business. I wanted it to be more. I wanted to open up a new world, a different, you know, just different outlooks and different things to my business. And so it kind of is all encapsulating in a coaching collective. And so Emerge is my one-on-one -on -one private coaching name. And if you look at my logo again, You'll see this on Instagram if you follow me there, but I highlight the M-E in Emerge. And what I was thinking was, again, client focus. I want this to be about the client experience, the client outcome, and changing their lives. I want this to be driven by the client. It's not about me anymore. It's not JFA Fitness where that was kind of highlighting me. No, this is about my clients and the experience and the outcomes that they get. And so I chose Emerge with highlighting me in Emerge as emerging as me. So clients who are reading it, they are emerging as me. I am reading it as, you know, you're emerging as you. Um, but what I mean by emerging as me is really connecting to yourself on a deeper level trusting in the processes and blooming and emerging into the healthiest version of yourself. And again, this means all areas. This does still mean fitness, yes, but it also means your hormone health. It also means your nutritional status. It also means taking care of your body from a deeper area and with more intention. So you are truly emerging as the person that you want to become. That is what Emerge means to me. And so I, I loved the name. I loved the idea behind the brand of, you know, I'm emerging as me. I'm emerging as the person I want to be. This is the life that I want for myself. And so that is kind of how I came up with that name and the focus for the brand. Um, and I just kind of tweaked some things back end with, with that as well. And so that takes us to present day. That is where we're at right now with the rebrand. Like I said, there's going to be some things that are coming. There's, you know, some things that are 
going to be longer thought out. It's not going to arrive anytime soon, but there are things that are already in the works for things that I'm going to be adding to this coaching collective for client outcomes. And so I will keep you guys updated on anything that is going to be coming out. Um, I have a big project on my hands for hopefully next year, hopefully, but going to hash that out. So I'm not going to give any promises yet. I'm not going to even talk about that. Like on my Instagram yet, this is the only place that you're even hearing that I have something coming out hopefully in a year from now, but I have a bigger project and we do have some smaller things as well. I will be continuing to do more master classes. So that's a free resource for anybody that is interested in master classes. There'll be a few of those coming up. I just love giving I love masterclasses. They're so much fun for me to do because I love the coaching aspect of it. I love the educational aspect of it. Like that's my favorite thing. And if I can do that for free and give you some valid, awesome resources for you guys to use now, like that's the best of both worlds. So I will be doing more workshops and masterclasses. I will be giving out some additional other free resources, guides. I just created a new free resource, which is just a simple guide talking about how to balance hormones and how to limit and reduce PMS symptoms. So anybody that wants that, you can either leave a comment in the you know, section below and say like PMS and I will send that to you. You can DM me the word PMS and I'll send that free guide to you. Again, it is free. And I'm also thinking about other things to add. So I will conclude this podcast episode with one of the bigger things that I am coming out with, which is one-time consultations. So think about this like a consultation with a new doctor. Say you have something going on, you need to see your a, a new doctor for, I don't know, whatever issue you got going on, right? So anytime you make a doctor's appointment for something new, usually you have a consultation. You just go in, you talk to them about what's going on, they'll give you feedback, you might have a follow-up, something like that. So think about it that way. That's kind of what I'm doing as well. It'll be on Zoom, so it's all online, but I'm doing nutritional consultations for clients or for anyone. I guess it's not really even clients. Um, I guess, well, technically it would be my quote-unquote client for a consultation. Anyway, I am launching one-on-one consultations, a one-time consultation for anybody that does want them. If you have any issues going on and you just want to talk about them, kind of get an idea on what to do to help with said issues that you're experiencing, this is perfect for you. You know, maybe you don't need the additional support that a one-on-one private client would need and you just want to kind of like talk things through a little bit more. This is then what I would say would be perfect for you. So I am doing one-time consultations starting now. This is again, the first place that this is live. So anybody listening to this episode, you are the first to know about this. Um, But let me know, again, comment below, DM me over on Instagram, the word consult, and we can talk about how we go about that. Again, it's all online via Zoom. You'll just fill out a form, we'll get on Zoom, we'll talk about what's going on and suggestions that I have for you to help with said issues. So I'm really excited about that. That is the first kind of new one-off thing in the Emerge Coaching Collective. And I hope that you guys take advantage of that. But let me know again if you want that. DM me the word consult and let's talk about that. But lots of great things to come in the future and, you know, near future, far future, a lot of great things to come. I'm really excited about it all. I feel so much more aligned with what is now kind of going on with my business, it kind of lights a fire under me. So all these ideas are just like kind of flowing now because I feel so much more aligned now than I did with JFA Fitness. So great things to come. I'm very excited about it all. I appreciate you guys for all of the support and helping me, you know, keep this going. So it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. Your support means the absolute world to me truly, but that is kind of the, the back end story on my rebrand and my chatty podcast episode today. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you need anything from me. I am here for you and I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Club with Julia podcast. If you love the episode, share the podcast and tag me and subscribe so you don't miss any further episodes. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a DM. Thanks for being a part of the club. See you next time.